Hello, this presentation is called The Basics of Social Media, the Why, the What, and the How for your small business or nonprofit. Welcome, I'm Dana Crawford, and it's my pleasure to present to you this, this awesome presentation today. I love social media, so I'm very passionate about it. It's, it's fun for me, and it's helped my business grow by heaps, leaps and bounds. So it's my pleasure to be able to share with you some of the things that I've learned over the years. Now you can find me at my website, powersellingmom.com, and please know that we will have a Q&A at the end of this presentation. And I also welcome your emails and your questions as needed. Now I will also be providing you with a follow-up email and it will contain an ebook, and there's also a handout with this as well. So you can give me a shout out also on any of the social media channels. You can find me on Facebook. Just remember, it's I have a one. It's Dana Crawford one, and then Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn. I've been an authorized local expert with Constant Contact for several years now. And I actually was contacted by them, so it's because I was such a fan already. I used them for my own personal email marketing and had such huge success that um, I, it was a pleasure to become a local expert with them and go through their training and certification. And then I also became a certified um, education specialist trained by eBay. I've been an eBay seller for 19 years now, and it's my livelihood, it's my life and they complement each other. The great thing about um, constant contact and social media and email and all of those things, they complement every business on the planet. So it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in, this will work for you. And I recently became the development director for our local food bank, so I'm really pleased to be involved with our community as well. Okay, so moving right along, we're gonna talk about becoming a marketer. And this is what it's all about. Constant Contact does provide the tools for us, but no matter what tools you use, the main thing is that you learn more and more as you go along. So why are we here today? Because you know social media marketing is important for your business, obviously. But it's also confusing and overwhelming. There's a lot of social networks out there, so you might not consider yourself a marketing expert, but now you have to know how to use all of these new tools. You might also not be comfortable using social media. It all looks and feels so new. And guess what? We are all still trying to figure this out. Social media actually changes all the time every day. And it's okay to be confused and overwhelmed because I'm here to help. So you're not the only one who needs help. I actually hear from people like it, like you every day, small businesses, large businesses, nonprofits, who wanna stand out from the pack and get more fans and followers and spread the word about what they do on social media. We did a survey recently and found that 54% of small businesses and 57% of nonprofits said that they need help with social media marketing. So there are a lot of you all out there in the same boat. You also probably have concerns about social media marketing. Many small businesses and nonprofit marketers do as well. We've heard like some of these. Social media marketing looks interesting but I'll never have a millions of fans. Using new marketing tools sound great, but I know I'll never have million, or I, I don't know what to say on social media. Reading what's being said sounds useful, but I'll never have a dedicated staff to do it right. Does any of these things sound like you? I hear about new tools and networks every day, but I just don't have the time to stay current. So these are the common things that we hear about all the time from marketers or from businesses. So this is really interesting because despite those concerns, social media is important for your business or nonprofit. It's how you're finding new customers or supporters 
and how you're staying on top of mind for your current ones and making them loyal repeat customers. So we asked small businesses what kinds of tools they were using for marketing. And at the time, only 10% were using social media marketing. So within a five year time span, it went up to 87%. Why? Because social media works. Hello, it works people. Your small business you and nonprofits, you don't do things that don't work, right? We don't do things that don't work. So this is quite a statistic and it shows such a huge, you know, change through the years. Well, five year span, that's pretty good. You have all you need to get started. And the really good news is that you can do this because what you do have is powerful. You can successfully market your small business and association because you already have loyal, happy customers or supporters, or if you're a nonprofit, you have an excellent customer experience. You have people that have had that and you have people that have interesting things to say. These are your loyal customers. These are people that have good things to say. So you already have everything that you need just to get started with your marketing. So let's take a look at today's agenda. We'll start off by talking about why social media has become an important marketing tool for all businesses and organizations. We'll have a brief overview of the top five social networks used by people and businesses like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. And we'll talk about what you can be posting on social media to market your business or organization. And then we'll tackle some steps you can take to get started with social media marketing today. So I want to start by helping you or others in your organization understand why a small business or nonprofit should be using social media. Staying ahead of the social media marketing game will give you a marketing edge. You can be the lead, the influencer. The impact on your business or organization is huge when you start using social media as a marketing tool. It will drive people to your door. It influences people's connections to nonprofits. 84% of social media users share information about nonprofits to show their support for a cause. It influences purchasing. 74% of shoppers rely on social media to guide purchase decisions. Social media has made it easier for people to buy from you. And they tell your friends about you. And they will become your next customer. So 43% of the people have purchased a product that's been shared by a friend on social media or favorited. Engagement is the new word of mouth. And this influence happens on social media because of audience engagement. We used to tell people things over the back fence, right? And now we tell everyone, our family, our friends, our colleagues, our clients, our best friends through social media. Because of social media tools, and don't forget other digital tools like email, marketing today is less about spending all of your time, money, and energy finding new customers it's more about fully engaging your existing happy customers and making it easy for them to tell others. The changes have leveled the playing field for smaller organizations like yours to compete with the big boys. So really think about it. You can start a Facebook page for your business and so can a big corporate chain. The difference is that you're able to use it 
to personally engage and respond to your customers with one-on-one -on -one without following a corporate rule book. The point we're trying to make is that social media is the new word of mouth. Social media helps to kickstart that word of mouth because marketing Because your message have the chance to be amplified and shared, social media marketing will bring you new customers and donors, supporters, volunteers, if you're a nonprofit, repeat business from your current customers and referrals from your happy customers. So I hope this is starting to make sense. Why social media is important. It's part of your entire business. Social media, the social visibility that it gives you, and how your business and customers engage with each other make up what we call the engagement marketing cycle. So let's look at this engagement marketing cycle and talk about how social media and engagement work together in this day-to-day -day life of your business. We've been talking about why you should use social media and how it drives behavior now. Let's think about the experience you provide through interactions with customers or supporters. If you want social media to work for you, you want to create a wow experience. So think about the ways that you interact with your customers or supporters. What's something you can do for them that's valuable? It doesn't have to be anything huge or expensive. A wow experience could be something small and meaningful. For example, the way you process a credit card could be normal, but the way you wrap the purchase could be the wow. If you work with other businesses, consider how you present proposals or project updates. Are you thinking about the, per the perception of you as a professional that when you leave, when you invest the time and care about the report's presentation? If you're a nonprofit, the wow could be the way you show supporters how you carry out your mission by using photos to illustrate the story. Again, you don't need to be go to extremes or way over the top. You do need to think about doing something that really creates a connection. What those connections do is open a window of opportunity to ask them to stay connected with you, which brings us to the next cycle. Leverage that wow moment. Ask them to connect with you, to like you on Facebook, because they know that you will continue to interact with them by sharing content, valuable information, and tips or discounts. Then encourage with your followers online, share social media posts that matter to them, and don't worry, we'll talk about what kind of social media posts work later on today's webinar. As they interact with you, social media allows that engagement to be visible online. When your followers like, comment, or share your content, those actions are seen by their networks, and that helps to introduce you to a whole group of new people who will become your next customer or supporter. I love that. It's called social visibility, and it seriously works. So, now that we've laid out what you should be considering social media as part of your marketing mix, let's jump into a reveal of the top five social networks. These are what we refer to as the top social networks. There's plenty of good chance that you're using or considering using one of these. We're going to quickly walk through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. This isn't going to be an in-depth analysis of each social media network. So what we want to do is familiarize you with these top networks, networks so that you've got some insight as you either confirm your decision to focus on one or as you weigh the decision on where to start. So keep in mind that you don't have to use all of these social networks for your business. Just choose the ones that are right for you and your audience. It's better to focus on a couple of social networks and do a good job with them to have a bunch that you don't have time for and manage poorly. Use this. 
What is Facebook? It is, it's the largest social media sharing site for people who use the internet and businesses who want to promote themselves online. There are 1.4 billion Facebook users. You probably have an account already, or if you don't, you know someone who uses it. So post this. What should you post on Facebook? Status updates include a line or two of text, a question, a sentence, an update, as well as links to other websites and photos or videos. No matter what you post, the content needs to benefit your audience. It should engage and inform them. You can also promote what's happening at your business, share your events, and talk about your products and services. How often should you post on Facebook? Well, that's changed a bit. You need to share content there frequently, but not too frequently. Try at least two times a day. You might not know that Facebook doesn't post every single post from every person or business you follow in your newsfeed chronologically. It has an algorithm known as edge rank. That shows content that's relevant to each user. The algorithm keeps track of the content each user clicks on, comments on, likes and shares, and displays posts that are similar to these preferences. What this means is that the more your followers interact with your content, the more likely they are to see your next post. Once you've gotten a handle of what your followers are interested in, and once you're con consistent with your Facebook posting, you'll be able to reach more people because Facebook's popularity and population we won't go into this today, but you can give yourself an edge with Facebook marketing by taking advantage of its advertising tools. Yes, you may need to spend a little bit of money to make Facebook work, but the advertising tools have a lot of great features and options. You don't need to spend much to see the impact. Okay, so let's move on. Our next site is called LinkedIn. This is another top social media network. The LinkedIn page you see here is for Grapevine Marketing, a marketing service company located in Manchester, New Hampshire. What is it? It is a social networking site that focuses on businesses and careers. As a user, you can use you can create a profile that includes your resume and skills and you can post status updates. Businesses can create a business account that showcases their products, services, and news, and you can post content there as well. What should your page share? Talk about what's happening with your business, your products, your services, events, link to blog posts you've written, topics in your industry, or how-to videos you've created. And try posting curated content. Curated content is content you found, but it was created by someone else. So think about an art museum curator. Did the art museum staff paint all the paintings it displays? No. The curator goes out and looks for art to show in the museum. That's what you're doing with curated content. Share the latest blog post by an industry expert, a news story about a hot topic to your industry, or a video explaining the latest trends. Make sure that when you share curated content that you give the original source credit in your post. When you do this, people will start to realize that you are the go-to source because you're on top of what's new in your industry. And if you're starting out at LinkedIn, try at least two posts per week to be consistent and keep your business top of mind with your LinkedIn followers. And the benefit of using LinkedIn for your business is that you'll start to establish your expertise when you talk about what's going on in your business and industry. You can use LinkedIn to network within your industry, connect with others who do what you do, become a resource for your peers, share content that will help them learn something or do their jobs better, participate in group discussions, and share your lessons and advice. Be someone that people in your industry can lean on for the latest information. Twitter is tweet. It is one of my favorites. So this is uh, 
a Twitter profile of a nonprofit called Strong Women, Strong Girls of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Boston. Twitter is actually the fastest moving social network. Think of it as a place where you can go for updates in real time about what's going on in the world. Twitter posts, which are known as tweets, are posted in chronological order and they share the latest news conversation on popular topics and helpful information. So you can share links to news about your business, your blogs, the photos, videos that show who you are, what you do, what you know. Remember when we talked about curated content when we looked at LinkedIn? Curated content works on Twitter too. So if you find something interesting, interesting and relevant to what you do, but it was created by someone else, share it and tweet it. Visit me on Twitter and share and retweet what I do because I would be happy to return the favor. I have actually just engaged into a new tool on Twitter and I can't wait to share it with you later. So because Twitter moves really fast, post try to post at least five times a day to be visible to your followers and contribute to the conversation and information sharing happenings there. Because Twitter is a place to find out what's happening right now, it's a great place to share up to the minute information with your audience, announce what's happening at your business, post updates or changes, and respond to customers who need help or ask questions. You could also have a team of Twitters, a twits, would they be twits? <laughs> have a team of twits and, and have them download the app and then they can all be tweeting from your business, all the employees. Okay, our fourth social network today is Pinterest. The Pinterest profile you see here is for Liberty Jane Clothing, a Seattle, Washington based online clothing pattern shop for American Girl dolls. Pinterest, it's a social network where pinners, pin, where users pin images of things they like to virtual bulletin boards. It's a way for users to virtually bookmark things they want to buy hobbies, interests, and information. These image pins are typically linked to a website where you can buy things, learn more about hobbies, read blog posts about various topics, or go to a web page with more information about the pin. Pinterest users follow other Pinterest users, and when they log into Pinterest, they can get a look at what people are pinning or bookmarking. Those pins appear in the Pinterest news feeds. So what should your business pin? Images of products and services, visual tips. Think of text or of tips, facts, or stats, um, photos, background, your digital content like blog posts, guides, infographics, or videos, interesting hobbies, things like that. I know my daughter's getting married and, and we're all pinning wedding ideas to the bulletin board. So you can actually have a community of people pinning to the board, it's fun. But you, do, you should be consistent and visible for Pinterest users to find and interact with your pins. Try at least five times per day. If that sounds like a lot, try this tip. Try pinning curated content. It works for Pinterest too. Your Pinterest board should contain a good mix of your original content and images and useful information from a variety of sources. So how can it help your business? When you pin your original content and you use the right keywords, your content has a good chance of being found in Pinterest search. Link your pins to relevant pages on your website to make it easy for people to take another step and interact with you. Read a blog post, buy a product, learn about a service, watch a video, or access more information about what you do. So you can include that kind of thing in the pin. Let's move on to our last social network, which is Instagram. What you see here is the Instagram profile for the Baltimore Humane Society or Animal Shelter on Baltimore, Maryland. Instagram is a slightly different beast <laughs> than the other social networks we covered today because most of the activity takes place in the Instagram app or on your smartphone. 
You can access Instagram on the desktop web browser, but you can't post photos from there. Instagram users post photos, images, videos through the Instagram app. So businesses that market with Instagram can share photos and videos that show off what happens at their location, their products and services, and their people that they work with, employees, customers. It's real easy to snap a quick photo of yourself, your staff, your customers, or anything happening during your day and share it with your followers. Let them see behind the scenes of your business and get them to know you better. It can be really fun. Try posting at least one time a day. Experiment with times during the day to see when you get the biggest response from your Instagram photos and then start sharing them regularly at the times that work best. So showing your audience parts of your business they wouldn't otherwise get a chance to see can help you begin to build relationships with them. When you share with your audience how you get things done, they can begin to feel as though you're reliable and someone they want to know more about. Makes sense, right? So now I want to focus on what to say. This is one of the biggest questions that I get. So what should I talk about on social media? I hear this all the time. I don't know what to say, Dana. So what you'll write about it will vary a bit from network to network, but we do have a general guideline for you to think about the content you'll create. So here's how you should split it up. Let's split it up like this. 50% of your content should be interesting and entertaining to your audience. Remember that people use social media to find out what's new and interesting with their friends, family, and businesses they like. Be con conversational. Con blah. Be conversational. Ask questions. Ask for opinions. People love to talk about themselves. I know I do. So open that door by being interactive. You can also just brighten their day share an inspirational quote, image, or interesting fact, or a fun or funny photo that relates to your business or industry. Then 30% of the content you share should provide information and to be useful or helping your readers. Think about tips, statistics, education, curated content from news blogs or sites, different sites. And finally, the remaining 20% can be about your business. Now it's about me, me, me. It can be call to action, asking people to take that next step, purchase something, register for an event, read a blog, learn about a new product or service. Keep that in mind. It's okay to use call to action, but not to hammer readers with the buy now, buy my product, buy my product, buy my product. That gets old. So let's break this down piece by piece. I want to show you examples of social media posts that follow the 50-30-20 rule that are shared across the five social networks we just talked about. So in the examples I'm going to show you, these could be used on just about whatever social network you use and on multiple social networks if you're using more than one. So keep in mind that you do need to adapt the content for the network you're posting to Change the content a little bit for each network. Make sure the caption or text on the post reflects the style, etiquette, and voice for each network. If you're posting on multiple sites, don't post exactly the same thing in one place. I know I tend to do that sometimes. So we'll start with the 50% of content that should be interesting and entertaining. So remember, it should be interesting, entertaining to your audience because they're checking in to find out what's new. So here's an inspirational quote from Liberty Jane Clothing. Happiness lies in the joy of achievement and the thrill of creative effort. That quote is interesting and relatable to Liberty Jane's clothing customers because they buy clothing patterns and sewing those patterns is hard work. This quote on its own would be Reliable, relatable to lots of industries. Relatable. God, I can't talk. Let's start over. This quote on its own would be relatable to lots of industries. But take a look at the design. 
It's all about sewing supplies. You can do something similar with a quilt. Find one you like online and link it to the social networks of your choice or create one on your own. The next post is definitely entertaining. You can't resist smiling at a cute goat. Honey Pot Hill Orchards took a photo of a goat on their farm and shared it on the Facebook page. Take photos of the fun, funny, or cute moments of your business and share them on social media. And people love animals. Our last example is an in interesting fact that was shared on Strong Women, Strong Girls Twitter account. The day it was posted was an anniversary of the first female astronaut, so a pilot to pilot a space shuttle mission. So the people who follow Strong Women, Strong Girls care about the nonprofit's mission of creating mentoring relationships between college students and girls. So they would be interested in historical facts. Now let's look at 30%. Honeypot Orchard shared a photo of their fresh picked nectarines, but instead of simply selling them, they educated their followers on the fruit. Nectarines are actually a type of peach. They don't just have the fuzz that peaches do. Did you know that before I showed you this example? I didn't either until I saw it on Honeypot Hill's Facebook page. So during the winter, the Baltimore Humane Society posted this photo on Instagram of a paw print in the snow. It was a great visual way to share a reminder with animals, lovers, to limit their pets. Outdoor time in the cold, to limit them being out in the cold. And to stay, to help stray animals in their neighborhood also. So here's a LinkedIn post from Grapevine Marketing. They shared a blog post from the website Business News Daily that shared 15 LinkedIn marketing tips. This is a great post for great buying marketing because their clients need marketing services and they're looking at this LinkedIn tips post while using LinkedIn. It's very helpful for their followers. So it's a helpful 30% you want to be helpful. Okay. So if you've entertained or provided interesting content for 50% of your posts and you've been helpful for 30% of your posts, you're building trust. Now it's time to promote your business. These kinds of posts ask people to take that next step, purchase something, register for an event, read a blog post, or learn about a new product or service. The Baltimore Humane Society regularly posts photos of pets that are available for adoption on Instagram. Sharing images of what you offer helps to remind people that they can come to you when they need the product services you provide. Liberty Jane Clothing often pins its new products on Pinterest page. Notice the words they use in the description. Metered, maxi, skirt, doll, clothes, pattern, and it's for American Girl dolls. People who are using Pinterest to search for these keywords may find this pin, which is linked to Liberty Jane's website. Anyone who is interested in purchasing the pattern can do so in just a few minutes. Share your events on social media. Strong Woman, Strong Girls Twitter account posted the image of the keynote speaker for an upcoming event and provided a link back to their website so their followers could learn more and register right away. So you might be asking yourself, how does this really work for a small business organization? How can I create simple content that's effective and keeps fans engaged? So let's take a look at one of our all-time favorite examples. Here's a Facebook post from Galupi's Restaurant. This is a pretty simple post. It's just letting their followers know about some upcoming entertainment. Notice how simple it is. No complex marketing message, no no outspoken marketing language. It's just a simple statement. Now look at the engagement that took place. Four people liked this post and one person shared the post. 
Filippi's followers saw the post in their Facebook news feed and it appealed to them, so they took a few seconds to respond and support the restaurant. The likes are good, but let's follow what happened when one of their fans shared this post with their Facebook friends. All right. So here's the post as it showed up in the news feed of the person who shared it. One of their friends liked the post and commented, let's go. This is word of mouth marketing. It's the power of engagement. And this is what happens when it leads to social visibility. So let's review this again. Gallippies decides to share a Facebook post about an upcoming event, and that post can be seen by their Facebook followers. So if any of their followers like or comment on that post, then Galoopies can see, can see that and know which one of their patrons are engaged. Also, any of these followers' friends may see the engagement that like or comment appear in their Facebook newsfeed and can also be seen if they visit that follower's profile. When any of the followers share that Facebook post about the upcoming events, that's when the magic happens, because then the post is seen by their followers and their friends. So out of that group of people, there's likely to be one or two who like what they see and decide that they need to be, they need to head over to, to Galoopies for some great entertainment. So again, the goal is to create the social visibility that will drive new prospects to your front door. When they do come through that door, they're already predisposed to buy, they're primed to have a great experience, and they're likely to be willing to connect and engage. That's powerful. So how powerful can it get? Let's look at this. Social networks that help connect people with similar interests. Let's consider this with respect to Facebook. The average number of friends that each adult friend has is about 338, and some have a lot more. The takeaway here is that when you like or share, that's getting you potentially visibility to several hundred or even more people. That's the power of scale and social networks today. It also allows me to make an important point about small numbers. Did you notice that a lot of the examples we showed had less than 100 likes or shares? One of them had just one like. That's fantastic because small is big. I'm also referring to the content. It can be small as well. Look at the examples we've shown you here today. Fun pictures sharing a link to an article or an interesting fact or statistic. So really, small is big. Start small, keep going, be consistent, be smart about what you post, and you'll see your engagement grow over time. Love it. So we've covered a lot so far, and I know why now you should know why social media marketing tools are important to use for your business. So you've learned a little bit about the top five social networks. You've also gotten some great ideas on what to post on social media. Now it's time to get started with social media marketing. The first thing we should do is start with Facebook. Why? It's the most popular network. Some of the people, or most of the people who use social media are on Facebook, which means your audience is already there. Most of your customers are already there, and it's easy to get started. We have six tips to help you get going. So for those of you who are already on Facebook, you might want to make sure you've completed the best practice from these tips. Check your page later on, and if you have done all of these things, you can move on to applying them to other social networks. So first, you're going to create your page. 
There are two different accounts that you can create on Facebook. So I wanted to talk about what the differences are and what you should do. You can create a Facebook page for your business or a per personal profile. It's really important to start with a Facebook business page and not a personal profile because they have different features. A Facebook business page is set up to promote your business. It has places for your information, a map, link to your website, and the ability to add things like a menu if you're a restaurant. The business page also comes with statistics. Facebook calls these insights that show you that show how your post did and how many fans you're growing over time. The personal profile does not have those settings. So if you've already started a Facebook account for your business or organization and you're not sure what you have, take a look. If you have friends, you started a personal profile. If you have likes, you created a business page. That's the easiest way to go determine um, what kind of page that you have. Now that you know which account to start with, go to facebook.com slash pages create and create your business page for those of you that need to set that up. And after you create your page, fill out all of the information for your business, address, phone number, website, hours, description. Don't leave anything out. And make sure you add your logo, that smaller photo on the left. And a cover photo is that big horizontal photo at the top of your page. A mistake a lot of organizations make is not filling out their information and not adding photos. You need to do this Facebook page to build your brand. So this is how people search now. They're looking for an official presence on Facebook. Having a complete page shows that this is your official home on Facebook and that you're active online. Now that you have your official page, your page has all of your information, photos, it's time to tell everyone. So the key here, any place you talk to a customer or supporter online or in person is a place you should mention your Facebook presence. Link to your page in your email marketing. You might want to send a separate email announcing your page. Constant Contact actually has a brilliant template already made up that does that for you. And make sure that you have a link to your Facebook page on your website or your blog. Put signups in your physical location in your store or on your office. Put them on your business cards to let customers or clients know that you're social. Add links to your social profiles on everything we didn't mention here. Your Outlook, your Gmail, email signature, your online event marketing, a link to all of your social networks and your about section, on and on. Linking to your profiles in multiple places makes it easy for people to follow you. And don't forget to pay it forward. Pay attention to who is interacting with your content, retweeting your tweets, repinning your pins, or liking your Instagram photos. Follow them and engage with their content. They'll be flattered that the business they love is taking the time to reach out to them. Now that you've told people about your page, start posting. Try posting one or two times per day. Consistency is important on Facebook to keep top of mind with your fans. So remember the 50-30-20 formula. Half of your posts should be interesting and entertaining. 30% of your posts should create value to your fans. Share useful information that can help them achieve success. Of course, you have to sell what you do, so make sure 20% of your posts are about your business. Inform your fans about what's new and what you're offering them. We mentioned earlier that Facebook business pages have an analytics tool called Facebook Insights that lets you track your Facebook posts to see what's working for you. If you're just starting out, don't feel like you have to bury yourself in data right away. Just pay attention. If you posted a fun photo of your staff that got a lot of interaction, but the text post you shared that asked followers about their weekend didn't get any engagement, then you've learned what's working for you. Do more of what works. Or come right out and ask your audience, now that we're, social, we're on social media, what do you want to hear about from us on Facebook? Just ask. 
So when you post to Facebook and you don't have to write every day, but you don't have to write something new every day, take that pressure off yourself. Keep it very simple. You can use content more than once on various networks and in multiple communications. So here's an example of this from the Boys and Girls Club in Austin. Here's a press release about an event. They posted this piece on their website. Then they shared a link on Facebook, posted several times on Twitter with quotes, and then noticed they had it in their email newsletter. So they repurposed it. And you can do this too. One of the great advantages of social media is that your fans interact with your content can be seen by their networks. So they can easily share your content, giving you a greater chance to reach more people. Increasingly, people are looking to social networks before making their purchasing decisions. So make sure you're including Facebook in your promotional strategy and share your campaigns there. Nonprofits can use a great use of promotional tools like Facebook Donate Tab, as shown as this example from the Rescued Pets Movement fans of the nonprofit can donate directly from Facebook, a place they're already spending time. Some ways you can integrate social media into your offer or promotion are post your email newsletters and email promotions on Facebook and other social media sites. Promote on Facebook. 62% say they look at small businesses, Facebook pages before they go buy from you. And you know customers love discounts and exclusive offers. Constant contact customers can use the Grow Facebook fan campaign to create and manage a Facebook specific offer for their pages fans. So make your images work for you. Post products, photos, or videos Social media users interact with the images than just text or text links. So you can engage with your audience, interact with them, offer tips and advice that can show you as an expert in your field, and ask questions. Ta-da! Chocolate uses social media to share information about what their ingredients are sourced, along with recipes, beautiful photos, their products, with links to their website, so hungry, hungry fans can click and buy. We know you're busy and you might not want to be, or can't be, on your computer all day. Save yourself some time by using social media tools. You can also schedule your social media posts. You don't have to be sitting in front of your computer to post your networks. Facebook has its scheduling tool built in, but the other networks don't. You can use tools like Hootsuite to schedule posts for your Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Hootsuite also has an Instagram feature that reminds you when to post content and makes it easy for you to share images. It's also important to keep track of conversations happening on social media. You can use Hootsuite and Twitter to do searches on your business name or important keywords. Check out what people are saying and offer your services or expertise to help. It doesn't take a lot of time to keep on track with social media. Try at least 20 uninterrupted minutes at a time, three to five times a week, to make social media planning, posting, and monitoring part of your schedule. And as I mentioned, I have these direct links for you to share more about Twitter and Facebook, and then also my, my new tool that I can't wait to tell you about. Now, this is awesome. The next thing you can do is think about a planning out your posts. So you could take a look at a week at a time. So I like this, I like this idea, and I actually use this a lot, and I do have this download for you to use as well. So it'll help you. You can bring um, feed off of it. You could kick off the week on Monday morning with a Monday motivational quote like Liberty Jane Clothing, every audience has a time, a rough time after the weekend, and a Monday motivation quote is a great example of the 50% your post that kind is interesting and entertaining and everybody can relate to. 
The next day's post could be, now these are just suggestions. You can brain feed off of these, brainstorm. The next day's post could be helpful information that can share with your followers, like the blog post about LinkedIn, tips that the grapevine marketing shared. Post a link to something that you've written about or a blog post by an expert. On Wednesday, it could be an interesting fact, like today in history post. You can do something similar, share a, a today in history fact about your industry or business. And of course, you do need to sell what you do. So on Thursday, you could post something about your business. Tell people what's new with your business or products or service. And then on Friday, it's the end of the week. People are gearing up for the weekend, so make them smile with a post that's fun. Share a photo, a funny quote, a post, a picture of how your staff is spending their Friday as a way to connect. And you're done. So you plan out the posts for the week. You could even spend a few minutes right now scheduling these posts with Facebook's tools or a social media tool like Hootsuite and then do the important stuff getting back to business. Now remember, I'm going to send you a direct link for all of these things. So you are going to be receiving this handout and you're welcome to, um, it'll be a PDF. You can print it out if you'd like. To get your your brain going and you can even add Saturday and Sunday down to the bottom if you choose and don't forget about the email we covered the top five social networks today but please don't forget about emails role in social media marketing some of you may be um, on many of the social networks but all of you are using email Email remains the best way to reach people directly, but also remember that at the core of all of its relationship you build with your clients, your customers, your followers, and having their email addresses will help you manage and nurture that relationship in a big, big way. We talked about how the social networks work today, and you may have noticed something. They all have their own rules about who sees content you post and how you can get in front of your audience. Well, guess what? With email, you have the control. You choose who you want to see your message, how it looks, and when you want to send it. You can use reporting to find out who actually opened and interacted with your content. You can find out who's reaching, who you're reaching, and who are your most active customers. Email helps to enhance that two-way conversation you're already having on social media. So it's important to get your email communication in front of your social audience. Promote your emails across all of your social networks and talk about social media and your emails. If you are a constant contact customer, you can easily publish your email to your Facebook page, Twitter, and LinkedIn. For Pinterest, create a pin for pins from an image in your email and then link to the online version of your email. Then encourage people to join your list. We'll talk about some tools and content you can use to do that in a minute. If you plan to promote your email on social media, make sure you include a join my mailing list button so anyone who isn't a subscriber can easily sign up. So, I wanna share something that happened that underscores the importance of driving social fans and followers back to your email. On November 8, 2015, the Social Media Examiner Facebook page with over 380,000 fans disappeared. Yes, it disappeared. It couldn't be found anywhere. And the best Facebook could tell the folks at Social Media Examiner was that the page was still in the background somewhere. The founder, of the social media examiner Michael Steltzner took to his personal Facebook and Twitter pages to post about it. He couldn't very well message or post although it was missing on Facebook page. They lost his Facebook page for two days. We've talked about this in the abstract of all the time that you don't really own your fans and followers on social media. And we try anyway to show how important it is to use social media and email together. Encourage your fans and followers to also subscribe to your email list and vice versa. 
to make sure that you're as visible as possible. We never in a million years thought that this kind of thing would happen to our friends at Social Media Examiner, but it's a startling example for all of us to consider today, right? Now, unfortunately, Michael also has a healthy email list, 412K strong and growing. And between that and his other social media channels, he is still able to communicate with his followers when he sorts this out. But who knows what will be on his page when he recovers it? Will all of his content be there? Hopefully, all of his fans will be. But for all of that today, let's take a minute to consider how we're all using Facebook presence to point people back to destinations that we do own and we can control. Your website, your blog, and I think I've made my point now, your email list. So let this can be, let this be an experience you can learn from, and let me show you a handful of ways to connect fans and followers from your social media channels back to your email list. So add a sign up on Facebook. There's lots of uh, subscription apps to try, so take your pick. It's a simple little app that you can add to your Facebook page so that fans can take it another step and subscribe. Ask in your social tweets. Send out um, some fun tweets. It's a great way to get fans or followers on social sites that may have been following you for a while. Get them to subscribe to your, your email list. And don't forget Instagram. Instagram is the only place where you can have a live clickable link on your on the profile. So use this sign up URL in your bio and tell people to click in your profile description. So refer to that bio link in your Instagram images if they're related to your email marketing. Post an image requesting that people subscribe and tell them that the link to do so is in your profile bio. And for Pinterest, create a pretty text image with a with details about how to subscribe. Include the hyperlink to your website or online subscription form in your profile or comment included with your post. And include sign up link in your bio. Include this link in your social media bio so when people are looking up what is what it is, is they're looking for you or, or where you're at or what your organization does, boom, they can subscribe for more information. So let's take a look at some of the tools that can help bring email and social media together. Add the Facebook sign up form app to your Facebook page. All you need to do is connect it to your constant contact account, customize your form, and then save the changes. Fans can access your sign up form directly from your Facebook page and add themselves to your email list within a few seconds. I also suggest you create a list that's dedicated. Uh, a, a sign up list for Facebook so then that way you'll know where they're coming from. So we mentioned a minute ago that you could share your emails on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn and this is how you do it with the social share tool. Social share offers a quick and easy way to share an email on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn with suggested post messages, images, and the best times to schedule posts based on when your social audience is most active. It also makes easy to plan social posts for an email with a monthly calendar. You can schedule your Facebook posts in advance and then social share will post to Facebook for you. I love, love that feature that Constant Contact rolled out recently. So here's another way to tie email and social media together. If you're sharing images on your business Facebook page or Instagram account, why not add them to your emails? You can use your photos from Facebook and Instagram in your constant contact account. Just connect your account to your Facebook or Instagram page and then add photos from your image library. It's awesome. We just talked about how you can share emails on social media. Now it's time to get your audience involved. 
Encourage your audience to share and share your promotions by using social media tools. This is really effective any way you do it, but you can grow your reach. Emails that include these social sharing buttons. If you're using Constant Contact, add the share bar to the top of your emails. It allows your readers to post a link to your email on their social media profiles. And remind your audience to share your promotions. Ask them to like it on Facebook, retweet on Twitter, or pin on Pinterest. Add social media buttons that link to your business social media profiles. The buttons are a nice visual reminder for them to click and follow you online. So your audience has a lot of influence via word of mouth and you can get your promotions in front of more people, their friends and their family, if they help spread the word for you. There's my Twitter. <laughs> Just got a tweet. Now you're ready to go. You've created a Facebook page, your audience knows how they can find you, they're offering, you're offering helpful, interesting, engaging content. Choose the social networks that are right for you. Your audience or in your business, this is what you're, you're going to do your next steps. What network is right for you? It's okay if you're not using every social network to promote what you do. Some may be a good fit and some may not. You can start by asking your audience, where do you prefer to get information about your favorite businesses? Go to where your audience is. If you're just getting started with social media, Facebook should be the first social media network you use. It has a huge audience and chances are a lot of your customers and potential customers are already using it. And promote Facebook, your Facebook page everywhere. Link it to any digital marketing you do. Remind your audience that they can find the latest information about your business on Facebook and make it easy for them to connect. And remember that 50, 30, 20 rule for content. Create a connection with your fans with the 50% of content and help them with tips and information for 30%. And once they've formed a relationship with you and trust you, they'll be more willing to buy. That's when the 20% of content about your business kicks in. Scheduling and planning will save you tons of time and you won't be scrambling or post something on Facebook at the end of the day. Keep an idea notebook or save links to things you see online that your fans might like. Then use the calendar you'll, you'll get in today's slides or sketch and plan for the next week. Get everything organized by creating your posts in advance and scheduling them through Facebook or the tool that I'm going to email you about with Hootsuite. When you use social media marketing, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel here. You're already doing other marketing. You're sending out emails, you're blogging or taking photos. Use some of that same material on your Facebook page. If your customers missed your email, your last email, they could see your information on Facebook. If you followed the best practices and the next steps we talked about, you'll be on your way to social media success. Become a marketer. You will be becoming a marketer. <laughs> All it takes is constant contact. I love that picture. So now we will have questions and I will open it up for questions shortly. And please remember that you can find me online. Now you can go to my resources. I have, uh, my website has been revamped and if you go to powersellingmom.com slash digital dash online dash marketing. Also you can go to joinmynewsletter.com. Don't you love it that I got that URL? <laughs> joinmynewsletter.com and when you go there there's actually you can choose which newsletter which list you want to be on you could be on my webinar list for example I have a lot of more webinars coming up and local events and things like that so you might want to sign up for one of those individual lists it's free 60-day trial just type in the URL powersellingmom.constantcontact.com 
and sign up for a free 60-day trial and get started today. I am happy to help you with email marketing. Anyone that does sign up today, I will give you a free 30-minute consultation. And also, you can go to powersellingmom.com slash email dash marketing and read up on all of the resource tools that I have. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining me today, and we will go to Q&A. And those that are listening in the archives, I'm here for you. And if you are watching this um, on the World Wide Web somewhere and you would like a copy of this presentation, please send me an email and you can contact me at powersellingmom.com. Thanks, everybody.